instructor today for your faith and finances stewardship course. That's right, stewardship faith and finances course. And we're on lesson number four, budgeting your financial resources. Budgeting your financial resources. Now, when we started this particular course, we started taking a look at how there's a divine connection between faith and finances. I'm just going to move this stool out of the way. There's a divine connection between faith and finances. When you start taking a look at that, you'll begin to realize how God wants you to properly have the knowledge and plan for financial breakthrough and the increase of abundance. However, he wants your faith to be tied to it. So you just can't have faith without works because faith without works is dead. So we teach some of the practical things in this particular course that would help you. Now, let me say this. When we're talking about growing financially, when we're talking about increasing in wealth you cannot be serious you are not serious about wealth and stewardship if you don't have and follow a budget if you don't have a budget and you don't follow your budget you're not serious about wealth increasing in wealth and abundance no every single decision that you make in life has to evolve around your budget it doesn't mean that your budget can't stretch it doesn't mean that you can't have access to certain liberties yes you can but it means that you are applying discipline to your life. I like that word, discipline. I'm gonna write it on the board right quick. Discipline. Anytime we begin to speak about budgeting, that word budget always implies discipline. Now, I like to say it this way. What exercise is to your body. You can't be serious about getting in shape and building your muscles if you don't work out. You can't be serious about losing weight if you don't diet. Well, you can't be serious about gaining wealth if you don't budget. The same thing exercise is to your body. The same thing that dieting is to your weight. The same thing that budgeting is to your finances. It's discipline. It's an important point of your growth and financial breakthrough that you begin to learn and apply discipline. Now, we're going to start off talking about the value of financial planning. There's a valuable lesson that we need to learn about planning financially. You need a plan. Go ahead and write that down. I need a plan. I need a plan. It's important that you understand that. That without a plan, you don't have... The plan always involves two things. Number one, it, it involves a goal. Number two, it involves steps. Without a plan, you don't have a goal, a destination to arrive to. And without a plan, you don't have the steps how to get there. So fi financial planning is very important. Fill in your first blank. Financial planning helps you use your money to get the most out of life. Financial planning helps you use your money. You have to get to the place where you begin to walk in discipline and establish a plan so that you will not allow money to use you, but you will use your money so that you can get the most out of life. They got very few people, uh, not very few people, they have some people that are in the body of Christ that, had, that speak very negatively about money or about increase or about finances or abundance. Uh, I've had some money, I've been broke. <laughs> I tell you, having money is a lot better. Glory to God. And I've been in those positions where I had where I had to come to grip that God wants me to have wealth. But he didn't just want me to have it, he, want me to, he wants me to do it the right way. I need a plan. So these people that are in the body of Christ that speak so negative about money, I have a question. Why do you work overtime to get extra money if money is bad? Money is not bad. Why do you have two jobs? Money is not bad. No, money has a, uh, a neutral position. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. So you have to make sure that you don't let money use you, but you use money. How do you do that? I first get a plan. If I don't get a plan, I won't be able to use money. Money will use me. Now let's go into the next point. The key ingredient of a financial plan is the budget. The budget is a key ingredient of the plan. They go together. You have to have a budget. That's the key ingredient to the plan, the budget. You don't have a serious plan if it doesn't involve a budget 
and you're not serious about your plan if you don't follow your budget. See, your budget is not designed to be long-term. It's designed to be short-term. It's designed to get you to the goal through certain steps. If you will follow the steps and stick with it for a time period, you will eventually arrive to your goal. And when you arrive to your goal, then you can begin to set your sights on something else, establish a new plan and a new budget to apply discipline to get to where you're going by following those steps. That's how this works. You have to start somewhere. It's the key ingredient of a financial plan. That's what the budget is. Now, number three, budgeting is a decision-making tool based on the basic principles of discipline. The basic principles of discipline. Now, there are three other blanks right there, so we're going to write them in right quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase this for a second, just for a second. I want to show you uh, that go in those blanks. Budgeting. I'm going to write down this word discipline that's in that point right there. Budgeting is a decision-making tool based on the basic principles of discipline. Now, when I talk about discipline, fill in your blanks with this. The next thing. I'm going to need patience. That's the first thing you fill in your blank. After that, I'm going to need wisdom. And then I'm going to need cost. That's what budget is. That All of this is your budget. It is discipline in these areas right there. It is discipline, patience, wisdom, and excuse me, not just cost, opportunity cost. That's what the budget is. The budget is, that's, that's the blank right there you fill in. Patience, wisdom, cost, opportunity cost. That's the budget. I need discipline if I'm going to grow financially. But if I don't have patience, I won't be able to grow financially. I have to be patient. I have to work my way with it. Not only am I have to be patient, wisdom. I have to have wisdom. I, got, I have to apply wisdom when to do, when to say, and then there's cost. I have to make sure that I, I, I operate with opportunity cost, that I buy at the best time possible to get the most out of my dollar. That's the value of financial planning. Now we're gonna talk about the purpose of a budget. The purpose of a budget is simple. To understand the purpose of the budget, you must understand the following terms that are listed below. Now one of these terms are not in your book at this moment, one of these terms are not in your book at this moment, but I want you to write it down on the side. The first one is, write it on the side, earned income. Earned income. I want you to write it down. Earned income. Now, earned income is this. Earned income is income from wages, salaries, fees, things like that. Money that you get from your job, money that you get every month from the government, money that you get from anything else, it is earned income. That's earned income. So if you get it from rental properties, or if you get it from fees, or if you get it from um, royalty checks, or whatever it is, you have earned income. Now the second thing that I want to point out is number, number two. The second thing I want to point out, earned income, and then you have unearned. income unearned income now what unearned income is it is income received from property as interest dividends or the like it is income that is received from property it, dividends or the like in other words this is money you work for this is money you don't work for excuse me this is money that you receive from interest dividends this is called passive income this is aggressive income that I have to physically go there and do it. Passive income is money that comes to me that I don't actually have to work for. That's unearned income. That's unearned income. Now the next one that I want you to write down is fixed income. Fixed income. Fixed income is gaining or yielding a more or less uniform rate of income. In other words, you're gonna get this same amount every single time, every single week, or every single month, and it's gonna be this exact same amount, and it's a fixed income. That's what it is. Most people that receive government funding and things of that nature, they receive fixed income. 
they may get $900 uh, every two weeks or every month um, that, that comes from the government and they receive it on a fixed income. That means that your income is already lined out for you and it's gonna be the same way every single time. That's fixed income. Now the next one, which is important, is vari va va valuable, excuse me. I couldn't get it out. Valuable income. Fill in that blank. Valuable income. This is what variable income is. Gaining income that varies in amount. That is, that one week I might receive 400 and the next week I might receive 900 and I might receive 300 and I might receive 1200. It is called variable income. So you have earned income, money that you actually work for. Then you have unearned income, passive income, money that you don't work for but it still comes your way. Then you have fixed income, the same amount of money at a set rate and set pace. Then you have variable income, income that changes in dates and times and amounts. That's variable income. Now the purpose of the budget is to do a number of different things. Now that you know the type of income bracket, because you have to know which income bracket you fall into. Are you earned income, unearned income, fixed income, or variable income? You have to know which one you fall into so that you can properly plan for the budget. Now the purpose of the budget is to do three things. Number one, it is, or point A, it is to identify the sources of income. In, identify where do you get money from. Where do you get money? Where does money come from? You need to know that if you receive a check as a musician, as well as you work somewhere else, or if you receive um, royalty dividends, or if you receive anything like that, you need to identify the sources of income. You need to know where is your money flowing from. When the Bible talks about in the Garden of Eden, um, in, the, in the book of uh, Genesis, it talks about the rivers that flowed to, to the garden. Now I said they flowed to the garden. They know where they came from to where they were going. You have to know, identify your sources of income. The point B, you have to identify the expenses. Not only do I need to know where are the streams of income coming from, I need to know where are my streams of income going out. Where are they headed? Where, am I, where, where are they directed? Where am I spending my money? What are my categories of expenses? Now, I, I would advise you to begin to build categories. As you begin to build categories, this is what you do so that you can identify your streams of income. Put it over there. You, you might want to say, uh, um, you might want to say um, bills. We'll just say that. That could be mortgage, um, utilities, all of that. We'll just say that's in a category. Then we might want to say um, food. That's a category. Then we want to say miscellaneous. That's a category. Then you can begin to find out exactly where's your money going throughout the uh, month. Now you know where your money is coming from and you know where your money is going so you can begin to have those categories in place. You have to identify the expenses. Now point C is simple. Distinguish between fixed and variable income and expenses. Begin to take a look at it. This is how you do it. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Distinguish between fixed or variable incomes and expenses. Uh, Let's take a look. Your income here, your expenses here. Let's say you receive $2,800 a month. Let's give you that modest amount right there. You receive $2,800 a month. Now you have to take a look at it and you see that you spend $3,100 a month. Now you know that you're spending more than what you're bringing in. You know that. So now you get an operating percent, percentage. Distinguish between fixed and variable income and expenses. Establish limits and boundaries of operation. How do I get this down? Because the reason I feel like I'm broke is because I am actually spending more money. I have more money going out than I have coming in. So in times like this, what we normally do we begin to add another job, a, a, a second opportunity job, and we'll just say 1200. We'll add a second job to it right there. Now when we get here with this 1200, what we have now is 4,000 a month that we're bringing in, but we're spending all our time working for it. Now, because I have not developed discipline, I have more money 
So I add more money to my spending. And I'm still spending more, so I'm spending my will. And I'm wondering, how did I get to this place? How do I, I have more money, why am I not operating? Because I'm living like it, or why can I see it? It's because you didn't apply discipline back when you had this amount. You have to learn how to get your expenses down. You have to get your expenses down. So establish limits and boundaries of operation. Begin to establish and say that I'm only going to spend a certain amount in, in food. This is my budget for food. This is my budget for bills. How can I get my bills down? Maybe you don't need cable. Maybe you'll go with just Wi-Fi. And there are, some, there are some places out there that you can get. I know for a fact that I don't have cable anymore. I have Wi-Fi now. All I have is Wi-Fi. And I had it now for the past year or so where I have nothing but Wi-Fi. And I use what is called Sling TV. Now, I pay maybe $15 a month for Sling TV. I maybe, I maybe pay a certain amount of money for the Wi-Fi, but I'm able to condense it and bring it down some. Now we're gonna take a look at this next point. The enemy of your financial plan. Your financial plan has an enemy. I don't care if you get a plan, it has an enemy. Here's the enemy. The enemy of any financial plan is simple. It is impulse buying. It is you breaking your budget because of something you saw that looked good. It is impulse buying. It is you buying out of impulse. It is you just branching out, buying out of impulse. It is impulse buying. Now, impulse is this. Let me show you what impulse is. It's very simple. This is an important word. It's called impulse buying for a reason. That's not a good thing. So don't smile when we say that you're an impulse buyer. It's not a good thing. Impulse is defined as the influence of a particular feeling. The influence of a particular feeling. It is you feeling a certain way and you just jump out there and you can't wait and you just dive in full stream ahead and you gotta buy it right now. It's not a good price, it's not a good time, it's outside of your budget and it's gonna put you in a deficit but you still buy it anyway. That's impulse buying. The second thing impulse is involuntary emotions and thoughts that prompt a certain action involuntary emotions and thoughts. It is me being ruled by my soul and not walking in discipline in my spirit. It is me letting my emotions. I have to have this, this, this car or you have to have that purse or you have to go on that trip or right then, right there. It is impulsive that you just go. Your emotions and your thoughts begin to prompt certain actions. Now, before we close, it is important to realize that every purchase involves cost. Every purchase involves cost. Never, never make a purchase without analyzing cost and benefits. Never make a purchase without analyzing cost and benefits. This is what I mean by analyzing cost and benefits. Fill it, fill it out. To understand, an, understand analyzing cost and benefits, month, one must compare prices. You have to compare prices. You have to go and you have to take a look at it. And sometimes you can just do this on your phone. You can look up this particular brand of, of pants or suit or jeans or shoes and find out where you can get it at a more affordable price at. You have to analyze cost and benefits. Take the time to research the prices, compare the prices to understand the value. The key to wise purchases is to purchase, purchase with your budget in mind and to do your research. Purchase with your budget in mind and do your research. Your budget is your way out of a financial hole. Listen to what I just said. Your budget is your way out of a financial hole. Your budget is your way out of a potentially bad financial decision. Your budget is your way out of financial lack and into financial abundance. This thing called a budget should become your best friend. This should be your best friend. Your budget should be your best friend. I pray that this class lesson has blessed you and helped you. Again, this is the Stewardship